Today we're going to have a bit of a general overview about ways to improve at the game of Warhammer 40k on tabletop. Hello and welcome back to Warspets Tactics, the strategy focused 40k channel where we're all about getting the most out of our miniatures on the tabletop. So Warhammer 40k, like virtually any other game that you can play competitively against another person, is something that you can get significantly better at through a combination of playing more games, learning and working on your generalship, building stronger army lists, and also understanding a deeper knowledge of the game as a whole. I think the majority of people who play in most games generally want to improve to some extent. I know you can perfectly happily play 40k at a much more casual level, but I think a lot of the entertainment for me comes from trying to grow and get better as a general and a hobbyist, and come back stronger each time that your little army gets defeated. With that in mind, in this video we're just going to do a short summary of some of the major ways that I think that you can improve in 40k, aiming for a bit more of a general overview in this one other than fine details, as of course getting better at playing 40k tabletop is kind of the entire point of this whole channel. In any case, let's jump straight into it. So first of all, I think for most people the most obvious way to improve is just to play a lot more games of Warhammer 40k. If you want to get better at any game or just about anything in life, and doing that skill or activity more is going to be the easiest and most natural way to improve. Playing a bunch of games against a variety of different opponents will help you understand your own army better, how armies interact on the tabletop, gain you valuable insights into how other armies play, and also considerations for things like missions and objectives. I think that some games can potentially be a little bit more valuable than others. Generally, in terms of improving generalship, I think you will tend to learn more from playing someone who's very good at the game, as opposed to having a bit more of a casual experience where you're just throwing around some dice, as it might just force you to make some better tactical decisions if you want to hang in the fight. If you can get to have any chance against playing factions that you don't know as well, then obviously that will build your knowledge of that faction, and the next time that you play them, you'll be a little bit better informed as to their sneaky tricks and stratagems. There's a truly massive amount of content in terms of rules, stratagems, and all sorts of different tweaks you can put on certain armies, so the more armies that you get an experience against, the better. If and when tournament games start getting going in earnest again, I do find that tournaments can be a very good way to achieve a lot of games like this quickly. You're likely to be playing different armies that you're not quite as familiar with, and also people are generally going to be trying to bring their A-game. I personally really enjoy tournaments and organised events, although I know they're not for everyone. As you're playing through a game, and even after you've finished, I try and think about your decisions in retrospect, and see whether or not they've actually made a good or bad impact on the game from your point of view. Hindsight can sometimes make it obvious that you really shouldn't have made that particular tactical move, should have been a bit more conservative, or a bit braver with a unit. And usually if I do get beaten by anyone, I do like to ask if there's any way that they think I could have done better in the game, as things can sometimes look and feel very different from the other side of the table. Playing more games will also help you analyse your unit's performance on the table, maybe think about ones that aren't performing very consistently, if they've really not achieved anything for several games in a row. Though I would bear in mind that any given unit could underperform on one game, just based on the matchup, the mission, or how well you roll for them. Of course, in real life, time is always a factor, but if you do have chance to play a few more games, then it will generally lead you to being a better player on the whole. Well, you are mid-game, there's a bunch of skills that you can hone and develop. I would say that these are some of the biggest areas where you could potentially influence a game with your own tactical decisions. Picking secondaries and picking the wrong ones is a very easy way to screw up games of Eternal War, and picking the right ones really does mean that you need to have a decent understanding of how you think that the game is going to unfold, and which ones might be easier, bearing in mind your own actions and your opponent's counter-reactions based on the objectives. You can potentially play the same army very differently, for example deploying very conservatively and trying to maximise your unit's durability, or going very aggressive early on and trying to take the fight to the enemy. Going with the wrong overall battle plan could influence the game. There's also tactical decisions to be made during deployment, moving and screening enemy units, good use of terrain, target priority and shooting, managing command point rerolls and stratagems and the limited resource that they have, and there's plenty of gamey tricks that you can use in close combat and in the fight phase. I've made videos myself on most of these areas, although admittedly mostly for 8th edition, and I think most people very rarely play any of these absolutely perfectly, but it's good to know the sorts of things and ideas that you should be aiming for when making all of these decisions. As well as being good in-game, Warhammer 40k is sort of a game of two halves, the first of which is building and designing a strong army list. If you think that you're equal skill to the opponent, if you're running a better army list than they are, in general you are going to have an advantage. Usually with list building it makes sense to start with a general theme of roughly what your army is going to try and do to achieve victory, say being a durable advancing gun line of intercessors for example. 
or a fast-moving, hard-hitting and objective-capping Eldar list that maybe isn't quite as durable to shoot at. Once decided, it's just trying to take the optimal units and combos to deliver on your main battle plan and a few other units to potentially cover weaknesses, say such as psychic defense, objective capping, screening or long-range fire support. And always when I am building army lists, I think about both the mission that you're going to be playing, say for the new Eternal War missions, what sort of secondaries are you thinking about using in most games and how are you going to achieve them? And I'd also think about the meta that it's likely to be playing in. Say, for example, if there were a lot of Space Marine lists running around, I'd think about including a few more weapons that are good at killing Space Marines. I generally find it's quite worthwhile to keep some tabs on high-performing lists at tournaments as well. There's all sorts of lists and websites that share high-ranking tournament lists, and I myself use Best Coast Pairings as well, which can be an easy way to search for lists for each faction. Of course, if you're doing things very simplistically, you could just literally copy the top list, although it isn't exactly seen as a very skillful thing to do. I prefer to just have these as a sort of highlight for some of the strongest units and combos, both to think about adding certain units to my army if they really are looking strong at the moment, and also to be aware of what other scary things are out there, and things to have a bit of a plan to deal with if they happen to meet this army on the other side of the table. Of course, once you have designed the ultimate army list, if you are playing actually on physical tabletop rather than something like Tabletop Simulator, you do actually need to acquire the models to be able to run the efficient list. Generally more experienced veteran players will have a bit of an advantage over newer ones with this, as they'll generally have a larger pool of models available, so they'll be able to make more choices as to whether or not they leave out or include certain units. I make quite a lot of use of magnets for magnetising war gear options, which can further increase the flexibility of the units that you've bothered to paint up, though even with quite a decent collection of things like guard and space marines at my disposal, I still have certainly quite a lot of limitations as to what I'd ideally run in theorycraft, compared with the models that I actually own and have painted. There is certainly a bit of an element of pay to win in 40k unfortunately, often the new releases are given slightly better rules by Games Workshop, and even if just some older units come to the fore as some of the strongest things that you can run, then being able to acquire them quickly can give people who chase the meta like this a bit of an edge. Personally I often do tend to paint up slightly more competitive options, but at really quite a slow rate, as I don't really think it makes too much sense to invest in chasing the meta all that much, as things might well move on even if you do paint up a trio of every single of the most competitive units at the moment. I prefer the philosophy of slowly acquiring more models and then having a larger pool to draw from, so hopefully you've at least got some of the more competitive options each time an addition changes. Finally, as well as having a strong army and being good in game, I think just having a very good general background knowledge of the 40k game and the armies within it will do you a lot of favours. Generally most people will tend to have the codex for their own army, you should be quite familiar with it and know your own army's abilities and stratagems quite well. The first step is knowing all the options that you have and then working out when it's best to apply them when you're actually in a game. For other armies, in general I think it's not worth the effort of literally learning every single faction in the game in detail, I barely manage to keep up with all of them and I basically make YouTube videos about 40k tactics as a full time thing. In general, playing games against experienced people who use the armies is a very good way of learning the way that they function and also highlighting any of the stronger things that they decide to include in their lists. Otherwise, you can occasionally do a little bit of background reading if you just want to find out a little bit about how one faction works. You can access units and profiles and the rules from things like the Warhammer app or places like Battlescribe or Warhopedia, which might be on a bit more shaky intellectual property ground, but they have been around for a long time and Games Workshop hasn't seemed to shut them down yet. Otherwise, there's an absolute ton of 40k content creators and social media platforms dedicated to all aspects of 40k. Of course, YouTube tactic attack videos and battle reports are a really good way to get the hang of the rules and see some combos in action. Most 40k factions have their own dedicated Facebook group and subreddits, and I do recommend the competitive 40k Facebook page and also Reddit group as a place where people tend to discuss some of the stronger units and combos and just generally keep you abreast of what sort of things are looking scary at the moment. There's also plenty of websites and blogs that have a bit more of a tactics focused slant. Things like Goonhammer and The Art of War are both really good content creators. Overall, to get better at the 40k tabletop game, there's really quite a lot of options. Though at the most basic level, a decent army list and playing more games is the easiest way to go. If you have any other insights or tricks that have helped you get a bit better, please let us know down in the comments below. And feel free to subscribe to All Specs Tactics, where we are basically all about talking 40k tactics trying to understand the game a bit better, and maybe improve your play a little bit over time. If you've got good value out of this video, or you'd just like to help support future videos happen, then I'd just like to mention that the channel has a Patreon page, which is down in the video description below. 
Channel patrons get access to seeing one video early per week, there's regular polls to see what sort of things come next on the channel, and you also get automatically entered into the Auspex Tactics prize giveaway, which happens once a month. It really is the thing that keeps the channel going, so a massive thank you to all my current Patreons. It's great to be able to do this as a more full-time thing. If you're interested and would like to check it out, the link is down in the video description. In any case, a massive thank you for listening, and I'll hope to see you guys next time.